Welcome to our Yom Yerushalayim event. The Shlichim do it for you. Follow me. Welcome to our Yom Yerushalayim. Go ahead. Another name for Noah's son Shem. 
we know that in the times of Yehoshua, there was another ruler of Yerushalayim. His name was Adonit Tzedek. And so therefore the term Tzedek, just like the word Pharaoh for Egyptian rulers, the word Tzedek was used for rulers over the city of Yerushalayim. Why is that? And the portion explained, because whereas many of the city-states and provinces that existed in the Middle East at this time were not committed to justice, were not committed to making sure that other people were taken care of, were not committed to justice, such as the city of Sodom and the city of Amora. The city of Salem, the city of Shalem, was completely committed. That was its credo. That's, those were the rules that the city possessed. It had a certain sort of uh, declaration of principles. And every ruler who ruled over the city had to commit to those, to those principles in order to become the ruler of the city. And as a testament that you were abiding by the rules of, of what it meant to govern the city of Salem, you became the new ruler, but you had the word Tzedek appended to your name. Now let's go and talk about, this is the non-Jewish significance of the city of Salem. Now let's talk about the origins of the Jewish significance of the city. <clears throat> we know that when Abraham Avinu brought his son Yitzhak on the Akedah, it was in a place called Aramoria, which was in the middle or somewhere adjacent to the city of Salem. And after Abraham was finished with his extremely life-altering experience at the Akedah, he named the place Hashem Yireh, God will see. Because his experience was that there was a unique bond between him and Akadosh Baruch Hu, and that wherever I go and wherever I am, Hashem is looking over me in a special way. <coughs> Explains the Medrash and Gracious Rabbah that Akadosh Baruch Hu had a dilemma when it came to declaring the capital city of Eretz Yisrael and giving it its proper name. Hashem said, my dilemma is that if I name the city after Avraham Avinu's experience, then my beloved Sadiq Shem, who although is not part of the Jewish people, but nevertheless played a significant role in the history of the city, he'll come with timeouts, he'll come with complaints. Because after all, it was known as the city of Shalem. And if I name it the city as Shalem, then Abraham Avinu will come with ta'anot, he'll come with complaints. Because after all, there was a unique experience that happened to Abraham. And therefore, says the Medrash, HaKadosh Baruch who says, we will take the name of Hashem Yireh and the name of Shalem, and we will put them together to have the name Yerushalayim, which is a contraction of the words Hashem Yireh for Abraham Avinu's experience. And the word Shalem, which is the experience of Shame of Malkitzah. If you look and you think about it further, there's a very important message that Chazal are sending to us about what this city of Jerusalem is all about. HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave the Jewish people a very important mandate. And it, is, it has a duality of purpose. On the one hand, we are the Am HaNivchar, we are the chosen people, we have experiences that are unique to Klal Yisrael. And this is represented by the, the unique vision and the isolated vision, the solitary vision that Avraham Avinu has on Har Hamoria. But at the same time, the Jewish people have a second mandate, and that is to be an Or Lagoyim. There is a universalistic aspect of what it means to be a Jew which means to contribute to the fabric of godliness throughout the world. So on the one hand, we have experiences and rituals and practices that are unique to the Jewish people that are for us and for us alone. And there is also this aspect of universality that we have to share whatever we can of godliness to make sure that the light of Hashem diffuses throughout the entire world. And therefore, what Yerushalayim represents, the contraction of these two names, is that it represents the particularism of the Akedah, the unique experience to the Jewish people of the binding of Yitzchak, but it also represents the universal message 
of what it means to be an Ir Tzedek, to be a city of righteousness that is really for the entire world, which is what the city of Salem represents. And therefore, if we think about what is happening, what has happened in Yerushalayim over the last 45 years, and even before then, Baruch Hashem, we have had, we've been able to hold on to the city of Yerushalayim as a unified city for the past 45 years, since 1967, after the Six-Day War, when HaKadosh Baruch Hu miraculously gave us back the city after it had been divided. But there's a message here. When the, the Jewish people are fulfilling one mandate to the exclusion of another mandate, then there's something that is reflected in the city of Yerushalayim. When we are exclusively worried about our role as the Jewish people in a particularistic fashion, and we exclusively focus inwardly, and don't care about the rest of the world, then Yerushalayim is no longer Yerushalayim, but rather it is just Hashem Yireh. Hashem will look down upon the Jewish people, and he will be pr proud, and he will shet nachas, but he will not say that Yerushalayim is an Ir Shalem. It's not necessarily a complete city, a whole city. And that is why sometimes Yerushalayim is divided, or what is happening today is that there is an effort in the world community to re-divide Yerushalayim. But on the other hand, when the Jewish people do not focus on the unique covenant between God and Israel, and we only focus on the universal principles of mankind and of righteousness, and we ignore the unique covenant that Hashem made with us in the Torah that we spoke, then Yerushalayim is no longer Yerushalayim, but it is only Shalayim. It is only complete, but it loses its Jewish character. And therefore, the two efforts that we have to struggle with throughout history is are they going to divide Yerushalayim or are they going to make it into an international city which will be devoid of Jewish governance and Jewish independence? Those are the two struggles that Yerushalayim faces in every generation. And it is a calling to Klal Yisrael that in order for us to hold on to a united Yerushalayim and also a Yerushalayim that is uniquely Jewish, we have to have both messages in hand. We have to be the people who are faithful to our unique covenant of Hashem Yireh, of the Akedah. We also have to be the people who are shalem in the sense that we are constantly devoted to tzedek and to being an orlagoyim. And so therefore, in this time which is extremely exciting for the Jewish people, but also at a time which is very precarious for the Jewish people, at a time when the, when the world community either wants to split us up or make us into an international city, we say no. We resolve we will be both the unique Klal Yisrael, the particularist Klal Yisrael, and we will also be the universal Klal Yisrael that provides a message to the entire world. And if we take those roles seriously, then Yerushalayim will be the united capital city of the Jewish people from today all the way to the world of Mashiach. May we be zochet to see it. Amen. Amen. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of our Shalichim who are doing such an amazing job and to Samuel Silver, and to all of the people who were so instrumental in making this beautiful Yom Yerushalayim event. We should all be zolcha to celebrate this in Yerushalayim HaBin in the Arabi Israel decided a few months after the 
um, release of Jerusalem to declare this day as a day of thanks, Hallel, Hodaya, and in Israel since then until today, many shuls celebrate with Hallel and Perkei uh, Tigilim, some of the prayers of Yom Yerushalayim, and the state itself also declared Yom Yerushalayim as an official uh, national day and is celebrated since then and on as a wonderful experience of flag dances and celebrations in Yerushalayim and also elsewhere in Eretz Yisrael. I would like to invite um, Hillel Horowitz, Shliach Toram Tzion, to say a few words um, on Yom Yerushalayim as the fulfillment of the vision of Nevi'im, of our prophets. Good evening, everyone. Yom Yerushalayim Sameach. We say three times every day in our prayer, We pray Hashem that He will come back to Jerusalem and we will be able to see it and He'll dwell in Bet HaMikdash. The Rambam in Yilchot Bet HaBkira, Perek Vav, Alachat Et Vav, discusses the Kedusha of Jerusalem, and he has a very important statement that he says that even though Am Yisrael is in Galut, in exile, and we are no longer in Jerusalem, still we should know that Jerusalem and the place of the Mikdash are still Kadosh, the Kedusha is still there. And that Kedusha doesn't disappear even when we go away. When we read that, the question rises by itself, so what are we praying for? If Hashem is in Jerusalem all the time, and He's dwelling on Hara Moriah and waiting for us to come back, so what are we praying for? Hashem is there, waiting for us, so what are we waiting for? Maybe to answer that, we use a very famous story that appears in the Gemara in Masechet Makot. In the end of Masechet Makot, Daf Kaf Daled, the Gemara tells us a very famous story about Rabbi Akiva and his friends. When they walk and they get to Haratzofim, they view Harabait and they see a fox coming out of Bet Kodesh Kodashim, and everyone starts crying besides Rabbi Akiva and starts laughing. The people of the Rabbanim ask Rabbi Akiva, what are you laughing about? And as a good Jew, he always answers with a question of his own, and he says, what are you crying about? After they tell him that they see the fox coming out, and how can you not cry in such a situation, Rabbi Akiva has a very interesting answer. He tells him, now that I saw that the prophecy of Uriah, Tzion, Sadet, Echaresh, that Bet HaMikdash will be destroyed, I saw it was fulfilled, I can now know that the prophecy of Zechariah, Od Yeshvu Zkenim Uzkenot Bilchovot Yerushalayim, Umishantam Beyadam Mirov Yamim, I know that prophet prophecy will be fulfilled too. When we look at Rabbi Akiva's answer, it is a very strange one. Because if he wants to give some comfort to the Rabbanim, what should he say? He should say, don't worry, better me should be built. The Mashiach will come. Amazing thing will happen. Everything, miracles will happen below. That's what you have to tell the Rabbanim. All the people will sit down in the streets, children will play outside. Is that the words of comfort that the Chachamim are looking for? The Rav Kook addresses this person, this great rabbi that we all follow. As we know, most of the Torah Shukal Pesach we have these days from Rabbi Akiva. And in his introduction to Shira Shirim, he speaks about Rabbi Akiva and he says, Rabbi Akiva has a high spirit, Baal Nefesh Gvoha. Rabbi Akiva has the ability to see things that other people can't. When Rabbi Akiva is speaking to the Chachamim, he's telling them, when you see a fox coming out of Bet Kodesh Hashim, all you can see is destruction. But what I can see is a fulfillment of a prophecy. The same thing, he says, will happen many years later. When Zechariah tells people, you know, all the people will sit outside in the streets and the kids will play outside, people won't look at that and say, that's Geula. But you standing here can see that there would be redemption. 
That would be the Ulas. 145 years ago, in 1867, Mark Twain goes and tours around Israel. And he describes Jerusalem and he says, and here I'm not quoting, and he says, if you go outside of the walls of Jerusalem and you walk around them, you will go around the entire city in one hour. This is how small and poor that city is. When we sit here today, 145 years later, and we see the exact opposite. If you try and go around Jerusalem in one day, you won't manage. You look, you see the people playing outside. You see the older people sitting in the streets. This is a fulfillment of the prophecy. Rabbi Akiva is telling them already then, people won't be able to notice that that's the Geula. When we arrived here in Canada, we go off the plane, there's a board saying that 65% of the people in the entire history of the world that went over the age of 65 live these days with us. The time of the Zkenim sitting Mirov Yamin, we have prosperity, people live too long days, Jerusalem is filled with people. This is exactly the redemption that we are speaking about. The key to understand that, if we go back to what we start with, is the bracha we say every day. When you just look, when you just see, we don't say v'tirena. We say v'techezena. You need to be a man of vision. You need to be like Rabbi Akiva. If you have the ability to see beyond the reality, then you can see the geula. We pray to Hashem not to come back to Yerushalayim, because we know He's there, but to give us the ability to see Hashem there and to be these people of vision. And if we manage to have that vision, so we need to Hashem next year, all of us together can really sit in Yerushalayim of Nuyam. with an area of only one square kilometer was already overcrowded. Therefore began the construction of the new city, the part of Jerusalem outside of the city walls. The first attempt at residential settlement outside the walls of Jerusalem was undertaken by Jews who built a small complex on the hills overlooking Zion Gate across the valley of the this settlement, known as Mishkanot Shananim, eventually flourished and set the precedent for other new communities to spring up the west and north of the old city. In time, as the communities grew and connected geographically, this became known as the new city. Okay, this is the Yerushalayim of today. As you can see, it's surrounded with lots of neighborhoods. And here, you can see the old city surrounded by walls. In the old city, uh, inside the walls, live together uh, Muslims, Christians, and Jews. Every night, the gates uh, were close to make the uh, residents feel much more safety. Uh, and also, uh, if someone found himself outside the wall, especially at night, it was considered very extremely dangerous because of guns. Uh, as I told you, the overcrowding affected the living con uh, conditions Therefore, getting outside the walls was necessary. This is again the old city, uh, and you can see also the first neighborhoods outside the walls. 
Today I'll show you and I'll talk only about five of them. The first one, Mishkanot Shananim. Next, Machane Israel, Nachalat Shiva. Okay, first name of Mishkanot Shananim. After his fourth visit in Israel, Moshe Montefiore was bothered from the situation of the Jews inside the walls, and he was the first one to establish the first neighborhood outside the walls. The first neighborhood was built from two rows of departments close together, and also Moshe Montefiore built a flower windmill as a pharmacy for the residents and a wall will surround, surround the, the neighborhood with a gate that closed every night to make them feel much more safe. <coughs> the second uh, neighborhood outside the wall is called Mahane Israel and uh, built by Rabbi David Shimon Haradbash and he built that neighborhood for his community. And that neighborhood will be uh, with the, the apartments surrounded a courtyard and they make themselves feel much more safety because the outside walls of the apartments uh, created kind of wall with one gate and they uh, close it every night and that make them feel much more safe outside the walls. And there is, there is nothing to see today from Uh, they saw the first neighborhood and they saw that it it's can happen and it's possible to do it, so they tried it they're just like them. And since they knew that it's still dangerous uh, living outside the walls, so they bought a piece of land right next to the main street of the Alpha of today. And it was a very, very small land. That's why they built their apartments um, not organized. So if you see today, the neighborhood, what left from that neighborhood, and a lot, lots of the apartments left, it's, it's not organized. Next one? Yeah? Okay. The fifth uh, neighborhood called Me'ash Arim. Uh, the neighborhood built uh, at 1874 by a company and for safety it was built like Mahane Israel when the apartments close together around the courtyard with six gates. During the years the population in the neighborhood um, become much more and a lot of other apartments uh, were built inside the yard. That's just that a little bit uh, changed the original, um, the original uh, neighborhood. Today, most of the residents in the neighborhood are uh, Haredim. And in the neighborhood, we can find a lot of yeshivot, but they knesset kolelim. And in Shabbatot and Chakim, the uh, neighborhood closed for uh, transportation. The process of getting out of the walls was just the beginning to a long process. As long as the population of Yerushalayim increased and felt much more safety, they built more and more neighborhoods outside the walls. Jews are exiled. King Cyrus is dead. 
declaration enables the Jews to return and rebuild the temple. Alexander the Great's conquests include Jerusalem. However, his successors desecrate the temple. Which leads to the Maccabees revolt against the Greeks' imposition of Hellenism. The Roman Empire ceases control. And King Herod renovates the temple. A large scale revolt against a corrupt and vicious Roman reign fails. The second temple is destroyed, and the Jews are banned from Jerusalem. Sixty years pass, and Mark Cuthbert leads another revolt for the freedom of Jerusalem. But it fails. Scale revolt against a corrupt and vicious Roman reign fails. The second temple is destroyed, and the Jews are banned from Jerusalem. Sixty years pass, and our customer leads another revolt for the freedom of Jerusalem. But it fails. Good evening. Um, street of my childhood, Rechavia. Um, my parents made a dia to Israel at the beginning of the 50s. They uh, left behind the opportunities, the family business. The first neighborhood they went to was in Beit Vagan, called Shikul Bari. But after a few years, they moved to a new neighborhood. For them, it was new, it was Rechavia. The history of Rechavia. Rechavia was, was uh, okay. At the year 20, in 1921, uh, there was a, a plot, of, a piece of land, a very a rocky land, which was purchased by uh, by Jews from the Greek Orthodox Church. Uh, the name of the place was Jinzaria. Uh, uh, that was the name. If you can see on the left side, you can see the map still in Hebrew, even I think in English, you can see the old, uh, old name of uh, Jinzaria. On the right side, you can see the tents of what we call Duda Avoda, the battalion of work of people from the third area. These were the pioneers who built the neighborhood. Okay, the um, famous building that we all know, we've got, if you can see on the right side, you can see a Hal Shlomo, uh, the great synagogue with Mesut Agadol. On the left side is Yeshua, and we've got also the Gimnasia Rechavia, which was uh, uh, the first uh, Jewish, uh, what they call the Indian Shalai, the high school, very famous, a lot of people uh, learned it in this place. It was totally secular, uh, it works to the base. Um, the streets, all the streets, all the planning of the neighborhood was uh, designed by a, spe a special way of architecture. Uh, not only the building themselves, but also, also the streets. Uh, most of the streets were made uh, on, by pur on purpose, very narrow, so there's not going to be a lot of traffic. <laughs> um, there were only two main streets, even them in Canadian, the kind of, uh, that weren't so wide, two main streets. Uh, it was uh, made to be uh, a neighborhood for people like, uh, we call it Irkani, uh, with a lot of green, and a quiet neighborhood. The first families uh, that came to the neighborhood, or the people who invested, were Sfaradi, uh, very rich uh, uh, families, bought uh, um, some uh, lands that made their first aguda of the neighborhood. Later on came a very big group of what we call the Yekas. <laughs> and they joined also the neighborhood. Um, okay. So what influenced the uh, what names to give the streets? So the first uh, all the streets basically they've got the uh, names of Jews or poets, rabbis from Spain, not all of them from, from the golden age of the Jewish uh, time in Spain, but this is some names like Rabbi Shuel and Agib, then Maimon, which is Rambam, Ibn Ezra, Rabbi Yudah, Levi, uh, Rambam, and there are more streets, I can't even count them, but 
Something has changed. <coughs> Oshinsky, the head of the JNF, um, took the name of Abdullah in his street and decided that he was a very powerful man uh, while he was living and changed the name of the street of Abdullah to Oshinsky. <laughs> And not only that, we've got a very famous uh, street, all the ones who are touring in Yerushalayim, we've got a lot of good restaurants there. The whole Kerem HaKayemet came instead of the Bishwara Nagid street. And today, the Bishwara Nagid street was moved, we have the Kresti the one in the north. So that's also a change um, in the neighborhood. We've got a lot of, um, let me see some say some. In some uh, photos of the street to see how long they are. That's the typical street, Al Khalifi Street. And uh, that was the Greek windmill. We all know the windmill that uh, Rabbi Moshe, Rabbi Moshe. So Moshe Montefiore built, but there was another one which the Greek church built, even before the uh, neighborhood was built. And we've got also archaeology. Inside the neighborhood, you know how about Fasi? We got from the time of the second uh, temple, we got Kevreson. We got the name. Uh, just to the street, you see uh, this kind of tone. Um, and famous people that we all know, we've got a lot of professors. We've got the uh, professor of Israel, uh, Professor Hugo Bergman, Professor Dorsh Shalom. Some of them were neighbors to uh, uh, door. Um, Teddy Collins, who was the mayor of Yerushalayim for many years, was the mayor was there. Abba Ibn was living in my street. And the, the next one, Benjamin Netanyahu, I think we all know. Uh, we've got some writers, Chaim uh, Potok, we've got uh, Bill Wayne, and we've got uh, Adrian Blanchard, she was a writer of, uh, of children's, and there are a lot more. And me. Okay, I was also born in the streets, I was living there. And then I would like to take some stories from my childhood just before the Six Days War, during the war and after. Uh, what you can see on the picture is the border, and just near, if you want to Miller Street today, there's the big, uh, like it says, small street. But if you can see that the sign, dangerous, Shetach Oyev Lefanecha, is dangerous, there's an enemy territory, enemy territory. No passing. Now that was 500 meters from my, my day between the Israelis and Jordan, Jordanians. One thing I have to mention. At those days, nobody mentioned Palestinians. For us, we are the border Jordanians. Never heard the word Palestinians at, all the, at those days. And I can tell you one story that we had in our neighborhood. As kids, I was the little one. Uh, people, uh, some of the kids made like a balloon of hot air. Well, from paper, not from balloon, not from plastic. And we used to put it over a fire and to let it go into the skies. It was about a square meter heavy. And that caused a, a big incident. The UN was involved in it. Because you now it was so close to the goal that they thought the Jews are throwing missiles. So, and because of the wind, it took it to the other side of the world. Uh, just before the war, when the war was coming, uh, it was only broke uh, the war started. I remember as kids used to feel the sun sacks to protect, to put some tapes on the windows. And uh, that was before the war. And then um, when the broke, the day that the war uh, broke, we went to school. We were in classes. At 8 o'clock, the siren, something like this, the siren broke, and we had to go into one of the classes. We didn't have any kind of what we call Nikola Latin under Mr. Brown. And our parents, or other parents, used to took us. I was only in first in first grade. And between the bombing, you know, they, you know, they were shelling and we shooting. We had to go home, all the kids. And uh, then after a few days, we were underground, we were hiding. And then, as you can see, you must have liked the street, and suddenly everything was changed. Uh, we had the first bar mitzvah, and I've got a secret about this uh, behind this uh, slide. And uh, we have everything that's changed. Suddenly, every holiday, every sukhatwa, every shavuot, 
instead of going to show, we all, all the shows used to gather and go to Latvia, uh, to the old city. And my main experience was Shavuot. The first Shavuot, it was like, if it was uh, people were speaking before about the vision of the prophets, you saw everybody was going. We were among the amount of people. And there's a song, Adam. Adam. It's like the herd, like sheep, like of people. We came out to Jerusalem, we went out on Zion. And we as kids used to run all over in the old city. We weren't frightened. The ones who were frightened were. And I remember as a kid, we went up to the Temple Mount. I went into Botipata uh, Sela. We went to, so, to see the Mashkia. I didn't know this, it was forbidden. We went even underneath, the, you know, this, it's like a cave. Underneath, we went inside, we went to the Al-Aqsa. We as kids, we were, we were everywhere in the, in the Jewish in the Arab neighborhoods. We went to go on the roofs because you know houses are connected. For us, it became like our playground. This for me is one, and it's the first for me, my sisters, the lot for me is what in the cotton, that's my brother. <laughs> And um, I hope that we will be able to renew this kind of atmosphere. The enthusiasm. Um, going every Simcha Torah, you know, all the shoes, all the Sifre Torah, going to the cotton. Something that we are, it's a bit missing today. And we hope things, this enthusiasm, this happiness will come here. Ah, sorry. Okay. The one there on the left is my Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, we're going up to the next question. Which famous man lived in Talpiot? We have Eliezer Ben Yehuda, Harav Cook, Menachem Begin, or Teddy Kolak? Take a minute to think. Okay, if, you're, uh, if you want to answer number one, Eliezer Ben Yehuda, please raise your hand. Okay, uh, if you uh, want to answer number two, Harav Cook. Okay. Uh, if you want to answer number three, Menachem Begin. Or, okay. Or Teddy Kohler. Okay. And click on uh, Menachem Begin, please. Okay. Hello. Okay. Eliezer Begin. A man has to enter the Holy Jerusalem in modesty. First, it's Hakrabim entering the Kotel. Why are you laughing? Right, Rabbi Goren entering a Halabite. General Alabi entering the Holy Rabbi Gore? General And the last? Napoleon? No. So check, Napoleon? No, it's not Rabbi Gore. Okay, 
in Arabic for months. And the last one in Italian, mother of all. Okay, most of you think Italian, okay?
Malik Papa Balja on the tech and putting everything together. Baal and Gary Adasta for help in organizing the evening and definitely I'm so excited. Yeah, not the boss man, the time hold it. I'm the boss man and here for all of it for all the wonderful uh, things that we had on the table that organized again everything from behind the scenes and for all of you for coming again to celebrate with us on Yerushalayim. We would like to ask everyone to rise.